Welcome back to Mom Survival. Today's video is going to be my first installment of the Prepper Pantry and Freezer Cleanout, where I am just showing you how we rotate our Prepper Pantry and stockpile, as well as just using up food around the house and making sure none of it goes to waste. I really hope this is going to encourage you to not only have a stockpile set back in case of emergencies, but also to make it not so intimidating and to know that there is um, an easy way just to have a system with meal planning and and just making sure you use up the food as well if you aren't eating what you're stocking then you're not prepping well because that's just a waste of money just to let stuff sit on a shelf or sat in your freezer and wait for an emergency to use it prepping is a lifestyle and so you have to make um, your stockpile lifestyle as well and use it every single day so we diced up this huge um, spiral boneless ham that I had found it was on sale at Meyer, and so I snatched it up, and it gave us almost five pounds of ham, which is a lot of ham. And we obviously couldn't eat it all, so I did end up making a soup before this video. I forgot to film it, um, so I won't include that, but just know some of it went to that. And I am going to make two different other things with it today, but I won't be able to use all of it because there's just so much. So I am going to be sticking this in sandwich baggies and then in freezer baggies and labeling it and then putting it in the deep freezer so that I can use it for later and it won't go to waste. I highly suggest a deep freezer for short-term food storage because it just makes things that will go bad in a week last so much longer if you can just toss them in there. I went ahead and pulled out a jar of pasta and a can of peas and carrots and we are going to use some of this ham to make a pasta salad for lunch this week. I went ahead and I just boiled my noodles. Obviously I'm going to drain them and then I'm going to just set this in the fridge just for a couple of minutes to let it not be as hot. But I will say I do like to make my pasta salad when it's still a little bit, a little bit hot because I think it helps the um, sauce to stick to it. Pasta is a staple in our prepping pantry because it just obviously lasts so long. It's easy to store and you can make so much with it. It's so versatile. So I'd really suggest to have a good stockpile of several different types of pasta. But I'm going to go ahead and just toss in that can of peas and carrots and a generous amount of this ham. And then I'm just going to add in a various generous scoops of mayonnaise in here. That's going to just be the base of this pasta sauce. And then I'm just going to add, be adding some ground black pepper, some pink Himalayan salt, and some onion powder. And I can't tell you how much I put in here because I never measure it. I'm just too lazy. But if I had to eyeball it, it's probably a teaspoon of each. Seasonings are another staple to have in your stockpile. When you're cooking with such bland foods like pasta and rice, I think that seasonings are just essential. They're going to elevate that dish. They're going to make it worth eating and something to look forward to if you are going through something really hard in an emergency situation. And that's going to be it. Our pasta salad is complete. I'm just going to mix all of that up and we're going to enjoy this for lunch this week. The second thing I'm going to be doing with the rest of this diced ham is making a breakfast egg bake. I had some potatoes in our pantry that needed to be used up and were going kind of brown. So I'm going to go ahead and peel these. And of course, I'm going to save our scraps for our compost bin. I'm really trying to build our compost bin up so I'll be able to use our compost eventually and have enough to use that successfully in our garden. So I'm really trying not to waste any scraps. But I'm going to go ahead and dice up this potato. I'm not going to do it really fine, like hash browns, just bigger chunks so that it doesn't get as mushy when we go to eat it. But once this gets all cut up, I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil in the pan that's in my pantry and go ahead and fry that up onto the stove. I'm also going to be cutting up an onion and just dicing that and tossing it in as well. Onion is something that we have never successfully grown in our garden. We've done green onion, but I've never gotten like sweet onion or red onion to grow. So that is something that I'm really going to try hard this year to be able to grow and produce and preserve to put into our prepping pantry. Once all that is going to be sauteed, I'm going to add in a bell pepper as well because when I looked in my fridge, this needed to be used up and it goes really well with the mixture. As you can see, we have a ton of eggs that need to be used up, and these actually sat out in our coop for a while because we were sick this last week. So we always wash our eggs, but these needed an extra scrubbing because our girls were stepping on them a little longer than what they usually are. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and wash these eggs. And I ended up using about eight of them. I definitely could have done a full dozen of them, but my newborn started waking up and I wanted to finish this before I had to go feed him. So I just did eight. I'm just adding a little bit of milk and some freeze dried spinach. That is my favorite way to get vegetables in because it just kind of cooks in and my toddler doesn't even know they're there. Once those eggs are cooked up, I'm just gonna toss that over my potato mixture, add some diced ham. I was very generous with this because I wanted to use up the rest of this ham. And then we're just going to sprinkle on some cheese. And this can either just be warmed up in the microwave or my favorite way to warm it up, especially if my whole family is going to eat it, which we are, is going to be um, in the oven. So once I get this on top of here, I'll just put a lid on it. And then when we're ready to eat it, then I will just pop it into the oven for about 10 minutes on 350 and we have a delicious, healthy breakfast. And with both these dishes, none of my ham went to waste. So I have a ton of hamburger that is in our freezer. My parents buy an entire cow every single year. And then my sister and her family, my family and my parents split it three ways. And although my mom offers for us to take some of the better cuts of meat, I always say I just want the hamburger because, um, because since they're paying for it, I just want them to have the better cuts of meat. So we always end up with a ton of hamburger. And honestly, I always get bored with the same recipes that I'm using because I'm just not that creative. So stay tuned because, like I said, I have a ton of this stuff and I'm going to get creative on how to use it up. But for today's recipe, I am just making simple tacos, something that I can just throw in the crock pot because my newborn did not sleep last night and I am exhausted and just needed something really, really easy to make. And I'm actually making this in the crock pot for the first time. Normally I would just brown it up on the stove, but like I said, I just need something that's low maintenance and I don't have to worry about cooking and our nights are becoming really hectic. So obviously I just wanted to toss it in the crock pot. So that's what I'm going to do. I am following a recipe that I found online and it just said to thaw the hamburger out and toss it in the crock pot with a few other ingredients. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be adding salsa to this, like two cans of it, and you actually end up draining it towards the end, and I think I forgot to film that, so I just wanted to make sure that I was mentioning it here, but here are my two cans of salsa. This is homemade salsa from our garden. We canned this two years ago, and I also have some from last year, so obviously I need to use the oldest first and then I have this canned nacho cheese that in the stockpile we're actually almost out of this so that's something we need to restock on but this one is actually out of date it smells fine as you can see I'm doing the smell test here that's what I go off of if it smells fine we use it so I am just going to go ahead and add my can of cheese and then add those two salsas and like I said if I don't mention it at the end of this video or at the end of this meal I did drain the meat so it's not runny because the, adding this much salsa did, um, it did flavor the meat really well, but it did also make it runny. And then to use up some of the canned beans we have stocked, I am going to add these pinto beans, which I'm really glad I did because the meat didn't stretch as far as I thought it would. So it actually added bulk to the tacos and made them more hearty. And then I am just adding some taco seasoning and then again, some veggie powder. This one was some ground up freeze dried bell pepper and it really tasted good. So I'm just gonna cook this on low for about six hours, stir it all up, drain it, and then our meat is done for this meal. Like I said, I did have some onion that needed to be used up. So for toppings, I am just gonna go ahead and dice up a sweet onion. I actually bought cilantro this last week. I usually just keep it in my fridge because I, it's an ingredient we use like all the time. So it didn't need to be used up, but obviously who can eat tacos without cilantro? And then I did have lettuce that needed to be used up, so I'm chopping that up. We're going to throw some shredded cheese on here, and this is going to be our pantry tacos. So next thing that I made this week was these chocolate chip muffins. I actually started making my own mix and storing it in mason jars. But I do really like to keep these on hand because it says you can, you just have to add milk. I've made them with water before. Do they taste be, like 
better with water? No, but you can still make them. So it's just something that I like to keep on hand, keep in our pe prepping pantry for um, in case I don't have a ton of ingredients. And it's a treat that my son really, really enjoys. And like I said, it doesn't take that much to make them. So I did not film us mixing this up because my toddler wanted to help and it get kind of chaotic. But here is me putting them in. And like I said, my son absolutely loves these. These are super easy and they don't take up much room in the stockpile, but they needed to be used up. So I'm glad that we made them this week. My next item I made from our pantry clean out is these udon noodles. I actually stock quite a bit of different noodles because I think that's a great way to shake it up if you're getting tired of a certain meal or even just a certain item it's just to have something of a different texture and I really do love Asian food and I try to cook it as much as I possibly can to my knowledge but I'm not very good at it so I'm just making a random stir fry of items that I know go together and um, that need to be used up so I'm cutting up this bell pepper as well as another onion that needed to be used um, and I'm actually going to cut off most of this. That's why it like looks so weird the way I'm chopping it because most of it went bad. And then what I am cooking with is some avocado oil, soy sauce, sesame oil, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce this aja marin oil. It is a sweet Japanese cooking oil. I grew up with a Japanese aunt, um, and she used to cook with this all the time and kind of taught me how to do like different things with it. So that is what I'm using as well as this ground hamburger and a can of whole corn. Now our family is not a huge fan of meats, canned meat, but especially ground hamburger. I don't know what it is about it. It's just like the texture is just all mushy and gross. And um, yeah, it's just not my favorite. However, in order to be um, not wasting money, I don't want to just set something on a shelf if I'm stocking it and it go bad. That's a big waste of money. And if an emergency happens, how in the world am I supposed to know what this goes with, how to use it, what to cook with it if I'm not doing it on a daily basis? So that's a big reason why I once a week try to pull this out. Not just this, but like other canned meats. Just once a week cooking with a canned meat and learning how to use it and learning what my family will tolerate and what they actually enjoy because if an emergency happens, I want to like have a sense of normalcy. I mean, we all love food. We all gather around food to share a meal, right? And that's just something that brings us all joy. So if I could bring just a little bit of normalcy and a little bit of comfort to my family and in a time that's hard or is an emergency or is abnormal, then I would love to be able to do that. So that's a big suggestion is to get your family used to eating the items that you are stocking so that it does not only create that sense of normalcy, but it also gives you guys, you know, a little bit of um, morale boost and something to look forward to. So this is what I came up with, just a simple stir fry. I tossed those noodles in and this was actually really, really good. And I ended up just topping it with a little bit of leftover cilantro from our tacos and that was dinner. That is going to be it for this week's Prepper Pantry and Freezer Clean Out. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to always eat what you stock, stock what you eat, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.